Shiva Baroso Salubondre Kila Bandra Hidus Radiana Matrakidus Manta Raba Hasi is a Bahai Rakabada Brizikila Baranaga Bondre Kila Brahada Kaboskus Masalina Mayandra Fakirus Rabba Basilo Branda Kila Barada Gila Bandra Hastas O Ramanda Sila Bayas Zezelia Manakios Cabanaria Kabak Rahila Mandakira Baradagos Sorobobondre Kila Baya Thank you Lord Jesus We give you praise We give you glory Take all the honor In Jesus precious name Amen Thank you Lord Glory to God Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. We love you and we worship your holy name. In Jesus' precious holy name. It's another evening and another beautiful session in God's presence. Tonight I want to share with us very few thoughts and scriptures that will help furnish our convictions in the place of prayer and also to give us insight and understanding concerning the gates of time so we know what to pray for and what should form our emphasis in the hour of prayer. It's so important that we understand that the realms are governed by mysteries. Nothing in the visible creation is normal. Everything factored into the visible creation has a pillar in the spirit. And these pillars form the mysteries of God. A man gains authority and dominion to the degree that he understands the mysteries that govern the realm and the extent to which he takes advantage of the principles upon which these mysteries operate. The Bible said in Deuteronomy 29, 29, it said the secret things belongs unto God, but the things that are revealed, they belong to us and to our children forever. Now, what gives us an edge in time is the degree to which we maximize the things that are revealed to us. If we have no access to secrets, then dominion will be far from us. Dominion is our ability to bring this visible creation under the authority, the government, and the will of God. And one of the ways to achieve that is by mastering the laws, the principles, the precepts, the status, and the judgments of God. And by so doing, wielding the hand of God and the power of the Spirit to bring the visible creation under the dominion of God. And when we look at the subject of prayer, prayer is one of the mysteries that the Lord has given to us in order to rule over this realm. Now, in order to maximize prayer, we need to know how to pray, we need to know when to pray, we need to know where to pray. Now, if we don't know these things, we will be boxing the wind and will not make so much progress. And that's why tonight we want to look carefully at when to pray. Because if you know when to pray, you will know what to pray at an exact time. The prophets of old did not just have results because they were men of prayer. You know, there are lots of us that pray, but we don't have results. The problem is not because there is no power in prayer. The problem is because we either don't know what to pray for as we ought to. We either don't know how to pray. We either don't know when to pray or, or where to pray. And when I say we are to pray, I'm not talking about a physical location. I'm talking about ability to enter into the spirit and to pray from the Holy of Holies. So I just needed to say that. So tonight we are going to look at the whens of prayer. Because if we know the whens of prayer, it will help us to know the words to pray. And it's very important. <clears throat> you know, God does not just do things. God does things and he keeps appointments. The Bible said in 2 Chronicles 12, verse 12, it said the sons of Isaac, they had understanding of the times and the seasons and knew what Israel ought to do. Now, the ability to know times and seasons was what imparted them the grace to know what to do. And the moment they knew what to do, 
the Bible said they were in command of their brethren. Now, a man cannot be in command until he knows what to do. And a man cannot know what to do until he knows when to do what to do. So the sons of Issachar, they had understanding of times and seasons and knew what Israel ought to do. And instantly, they were in charge of their brethren. Now, times are very important because spirits keep appointment. Now, I'm trying to keep it calm because what I want to share with you today, the power is not necessarily in the impartation. The power is in the practice. Now, practice brings us into perfection. And perfection is what makes us become like Christ. He said to some, he gave to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping, the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. He said, until, that's the time of practice. We all come to the unity of the faith unto a perfect man unto the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ now this is very important that I emphasize that the power of what I will be sharing tonight is not in the loftiness of Rema it is in the practice the diligent commitment to practicing and that's why I'm going to be talking strictly scriptures they'll be like nuggets but at the end of the day if you pick them up and practice them, you will become a champion in life and you will rule over the affairs of your life. I'm going to also teach again on the laws of prayer. Yes, so that I teach us the different kinds of prayers and the laws that governs their operation. But for tonight, I'm going to deal with the whens of prayer. You know, Jesus said, when thou prayest, when thou fastest, and when thou givest. So there is a when to everything. If he said if, then it might suggest to you that it's not a must. But if he says when, then it means it's a must. You only, know, you only need to know the whens or the timings or the seasons of this activity in order to maximize it. In the book of John chapter 5, if you study down to verse 9, the Bible began to tell us. He said at a certain time, the angel of the Lord went down and troubled the waters. Now, many at the pool of Bethesda were healed. But here, here is a man that was there for 38 long years. He was never healed. What was his problem? It was not because the power was not available. It was not because the presence was not available. It was not because the waters of the spirit were not being stirred. The problem with the man was that he didn't know the winds. So when the water is troubled, that's when he's looking for somebody to help him. But those who know the when, they maximize the interventions of God. He said, at a certain season, the angel of the Lord went down and troubled the waters. That's why I told you, the sons of Issachar, they were at the command of their brethren because they knew times and seasons. So they knew what to do. If the man at the pool of Bethesda knew when, he would have been readily prepared before the stirring of the waters. But because he didn't know when, he was there for 38 years. So his crisis was not designed to be there for 38 years. His crisis was there for 38 years because he didn't know when. So times are very important. There are many people that lose out of the provisions of their destinies. Not because they were not available. They did not know the seasons of engagements. And so they lost the seasons of encounter. If you know the times, you will know the seasons of engagement and you will maximize every encounter in your life. Jesus maximized every encounter in his life. He never missed one because he knew what to do. And he knew what to do because he knew his seasons. So first, we need to understand that divine interventions are allocated into different times. I began to do a teaching some time ago about the protocol of the presence. And I shared, I said, God dwells in light according to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16. So God is not in eternity. God is not in heaven. God is not on earth. What we have on earth are the dimensions of God that overshadows our realm. 
you know, in Luke chapter 1, verse 33 to 45, the Bible said, the angel Gabriel now talking to Mary, he said, the spirit of the Lord shall come upon you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. That thing that shall be formed in you shall be called the son of the highest. So what happened to Mary was an overshadowing of God. So the God that sits in heaven, in the throne of God, that comes from the east gate as the glorious one to sit on the throne, is actually an overshadowing of God on the visible universe and the invisible universe. Now, the Bible said, God dwells in light that is unapproachable. Where God dwells, the 24 elders cannot approach it because if you come there, you will vanish. The energy level of that realm only contains God. He said he dwells in light that cannot be approached. So God dwells in light and he carries immortality in himself. But God overshadows eternity and his throne dwells there. And God also overshadows the earth. Now, the thing with eternity and earth is that eternity is a realm of the highest intensity of the overshadowing of God. And because of this intensity, the experience of time is withdrawn. So when you enter into eternity, the intensity of the glory of God is too high, so you have no consciousness of time. Unfortunately, it is not so in time. You know, Moses ascended Mount Sinai, and when he entered into eternity through the gate of Sinai, he was there for 40 days. It was like a moment. Now, what happened there was actually beyond 40 days, because Moses told the story of Genesis to Revelation. Moses said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and God said, let there be light. So Moses entered into the foundation of time, and in Deuteronomy chapter 34, Moses said, I saw the Holy One coming from Mount Paran, and I saw him descending from Mount Seir with 10,000 of his sin. That is the battle of the end of the age the battle of Amegiddo in Revelation chapter 19. So what happened to Moses in 40 days was that Moses journeyed through time from the beginning to the end. The reason was because he entered into an envelope where the intensity of God was too high, so time was withdrawn. Now, I said that to say this, that if you are in heaven, worship is a perpetual continuum. The Bible said that the four beasts, they worship God day and night forever and ever. So worship does not stop. Prayer does not stop. Communion does not stop because it's a perpetual continuum. Why? Time does not exist. But if you come into time, there's a problem. You need to know that God is fragmented into part, into different moments, times, and seasons. So if you don't know how to maximize the times, you will not engage the fragmentation of God that is captured within the context of your existence. Now, this fragmentation transcends all of our existence is from beginning of time to the end of time now in our own allocated time in the sequences of the flow of the life of god his reality is fragmented into different moments so wisdom is our ability to tap into those moments and to maximize god this is what we call encounters now the bible said at a certain season the angel of the lord went down and troubled the water now, you may be having a marital crisis. If you pray the prayer to deal with the marital crisis at the wrong time, you may not have results on time. Now, you are going to have results. The reason you are going to have results is because you may tap into the economy of faith. You may tap into the economy of agreement prayer. You may tap into the economy of higher graces and anointings. So you can have results, but you will never much. Because if the edge of the knife is blunt, much effort will be put in. But if you know the time, to legislate you can do what you do at the wrong time in a shorter period of time and you have a bigger result the reason is because at that time there is a grace that is allocated into this realm and what you do is that you maximize it it's just like somebody who goes to to get water from the rain and the rain the cloud have not yet gathered and then he keeps his bucket there and the bucket is there for three days and then the cloud gathers on the third day what happened to that person is that he labored much but the one that knows how to read the cloud can be doing other things. When the cloud gathers, he can put his bucket and in 30 minutes he can receive the waters of the rain. Both of them receive water 
but one of them took three days, another one took 30 minutes. What is the difference? The ability to discern the moment. So he said, at a certain season, the angel of the Lord went down and troubled the water. We need to know what are the graces, what are the possibilities that are allocated into different moments of the day before we talk about the seasons. This is what we want to share tonight. The second thing we need to know is that God recruits men at different times and at different seasons. In Matthew chapter 20, you are going to see that from verse 1 to verse 9. Now, the first thing I've said is that there are different graces, there are different possibilities that are locked up into different moments of the day. The second thing I'm saying now is that at different times, God does different things. God does not do what he does at all times. You are aware of the Kronos time and the Kairos moment. And in every day, there are Kairos moments. Those are the moments we call the gates of the day. One of the things God does is that he recruits. One of the things he does is that he brings intervention. Matthew chapter 20, verse 1, he says, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an household, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. He doesn't go out at all times. He went out early in the morning. That's the first watch of the day. It's called 6 a.m. in the morning. And then in verse 3, he said, And he went out about the third hour, that's 9 a.m. in the morning, and saw others standing idle, and he, in the marketplace rather, and he said unto them, Go ye into my vineyard. So he left the, sixth, the first hour, which is 6 a.m. He didn't do anything by 8. He didn't do anything by 8. Now by 9, he went out again and he recruited. What is the difference? Why did he not recruit men between 7 and 8? Why did he go by 9? Because 6 and 9 are gates in the spirit. They are moments. You can't do recruitment exercise by 7 and 8. You are only permitted to do it by 6 and by 9. And then as you go down again to verse 5 and 6 and 7, again he went out about the 6th hour. That's 12 p.m. And about the ninth hour, that's 3 p.m. And did likewise. Now, he recruited at 6, at 9, at 12, and at 3. What happened to 7? 8. What happened to 10? 11. What happened to 1 and 2? They are not gates for recruitment. So imagine if you were working with that man, and then you wanted to do recruitment, and then you slept by 6 o'clock, and you woke up by 7. You are going to labor for 3 hours before the next recruitment. Now, a wise man will wake up by 6 and he will wake up and start recruiting. And then you say, how come it's fast for you? The difference is discerning of times and seasons. This is why you see somebody do something and get results. And then you do the same thing and fail. And you are now wondering, I did everything he did. Why did I not get the same result? Sometimes the difference is time. He did it at a moment. You did not do it at that moment. So your results will be different. He will recruit by 6 by 9, by 12, by 3. If you go out by 7, 8, you have no results. Go out by 10, 11, you have no results. Go out by 1 and 2, you have no results. This is why prayer becomes very effective when we understand the gates of time. And the first gate of time is the first hour of the morning. What is the grace allocated for the first hour of the morning? In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, Jesus prayed many times but there were times when Jesus prayed this kind of prayer it's called the hour of communion a man who does not commune with God at the first hour of the morning may not know God even if he does it will take time in Mark 1 35 and in the morning rising up a great while before the day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. There he prayed. What is that kind of prayer? The prayer of communion. Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. You will not know why some people understand God so much and others are wondering, why? Why do they know God and I don't know God? The difference is when you do your engagement. And they heard the voice of the Lord Lord God, walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence. 
among the trees in the garden. So what does that mean? At the early hours of the morning, the dimension of God that comes to you is the presence of God. And what he comes to do is communion, is fellowship, is koinonia. And it is in that communion that God is known experientially. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now, the voice of God did not only come to be heard, he came to commune. Because when Adam hid himself, he still heard God. So what the voice comes to do is not to be heard, is to commune. That's when Adam has intercourse with the divine and he became like God. Many people do not maximize the gate of 6 a.m. in the morning. That's why it looks as if God is so strange. They are wondering, why can't we know God? Early in the morning, in the cool of the day, he went to a solitary place. There, he prayed. Matthew 17, verse 2 and 3. The Bible said the same thing on the eighth day. And after six days, Jesus taken Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringing them up into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as light now that was where jesus does his communion that's where jesus mingles with god now he brought them this time to see you are wondering how do i know it's in the morning <clears throat> mark 135 usually he goes up a great while in the morning to pray before he goes to minister to the sick and if you study this same scripture in Luke chapter 9, verse 28 and 29, after he came down, he now went and he healed the, guy, the, the young boy that was deaf and dumb. It was his usual practice to go to the mountain to pray and come down to minister to the sick. This is where God is known experientially. If you want to know God through prayer, you need to maximize the gate of the early hours of the morning. That's when everybody is quiet and the spirit of man is still. You know, he said in Isaiah 26 verse 3, Be still and you will see, you will see, you will see, you will see the salvation of the Lord. He said, let me read it word for word. I, Jeremiah chapter 26 verse 3. He said, and so be, no, 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 26, 23. Why do I keep this scripture? Keep eluding me. Holy Spirit, I will never, I will never, I will never forget this scripture again. He said, He shall keep them in perfect peace, whose heart is stayed to the Lord. It is in the early hours of the morning when your spirit is calm that you can focus on the Lord and then you enter into the economy of the experience of God, one of which is peace. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So the first gate is the gate of communion and that gate is early a great while in the morning he goes to a solitary place there he communed the voice of god came walking in the garden in the cool of the day the voice of god came for communion he was looking for adam where are thou where are thou where are thou most times we wake up in the morning we just say lord thank you and we are out we don't know that the pillar of the presence is standing and waiting for communion and when we are exhausted in the day, we are hoping that we'll know God. It's going to be difficult. Thank you, Father. So you need to make a practice of maximizing the first gate. The second gate of time is the third hour. What is it about the third hour? Now, remember, you can pray any prayer at any time of the day. The precursor for answered prayer is faith. But this is a mystery that gives us an advantage. He said the secret things belong unto God, but the things that are revealed, they belong to us and to our children forever. He said in Psalm 25 verse 14, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. He will show them his covenant. Now, when God shows you his, shows you his secret, you become a ruler. So you can do everything at every time, but just in case you want to know God by prayer, 6 a.m. is the hour of communion. The second gate is called the third hour. What happens at the third hour, Mark chapter 15, verse 25. Mark 15, verse 25. It said, And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. The third hour 
is the hour of dealing with flesh. You want to win and conquer flesh in the place of prayer. The most, the most potent hour to pray prayers of dealing with flesh is 9 a.m. in the morning. That is the hour where flesh is crucified. He said, and it was the third hour and he was crucified. These guys know. They know because they know it takes time for flesh to die. So when they want to crucify, usually they crucify you at the third hour. And then you will labor on the cross for about 6 hours to 15 hours before you die. Blood will be drained from you. So any man that wants to travel against flesh, he wants to have victory over flesh in the place of prayer, the most potent hour to engage flesh is 9 a.m. in the morning. And you need to understand, for all of us who work, you know that the most productive hour of the day is between 9 and 12. And that's why no employer jokes with that time. That is when your potentials, your talents, your ability want to showcase themselves. So when you take them to the altar at that time, you know, um, when those days when they treat worms, worms with local herbs, what they do is that they give you sweet juice like banana. So you eat it and then the worms come out. They want to taste of the sweet sour and then the drug deals with them. That's what happens. Between that morning time, when you are agile, your mind is active, your body is strong, your emotions are active, and you want to display your abilities, your inspiration, that's when to bring the altar. And when you bring the altar, the altar will collide with the flesh. This is the practice of the Old Testament. The altar of sacrifice. That's where they put the animals and they are slaughtered. You want to slaughter your flesh, it is when your flesh is active. If your flesh... He, 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 you know, flesh is, is smart. He, he can masquerade. He hides. But that hour when he shows up, that's when men are crucified. So he said it was the third hour and he was crucified. That's when flesh is destroyed. Second scripture is in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 15. You are going to see something. There are two ways of dealing with flesh. It's either by bringing the verdict of the cross or by bringing the supply of the spirit because when the supply of the spirit come we see the image of God we see the presence of God and we are transformed and in Acts chapter 2 verse 15 look at what the Bible say Peter addressing the people he said for these are not drunken as ye suppose seem but it was the third hour of the day but this is that which was spoken by the prophet and it shall come to pass in the last days that God will pour out of I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. So where the spirit comes upon the flesh, where the supply of the spirit comes is at the third hour. So what happened to these guys? We study from church history. You know, Jesus told them in Luke 24, 49, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. And Bible history will tell us that they tarried for 10 days. And in Mark, in in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1, he said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were together in one accord and they heard the sound as of a rushing mighty wind. Why was he not at the first hour? Why was he not at the ninth hour? Why was he not at the twelfth hour? The hour of the supply of the spirit is the third hour of the day. And the first thing it does is that it tames flesh. And when it tames flesh, the second thing happens, it empowers you. And that's why he said it rested upon them cloven tongues as of fire and then abilities came and they began to speak in other tongues and prophesy. That was when ministry began and they went out and they conquered their world. The ninth, the third hour is the hour of empowerment. First is the hour of dealing with flesh and then secondly it is the hour of the supply of the spirit and thirdly it is the hour of spiritual empowerment. You want to gain spiritual empowerment, focus on the Lord at that hour. The chambers of your soul are open and God can pour himself upon you. I told you, these are not coincidences. The Holy Ghost did not come at the third hour because it was a coincidence. He said, at a certain time, the angel of the Lord descended into the waters and troubled it. Everything God does is allocated into times and into seasons. You want to tame flesh? Third hour. You want to be full of the Spirit? Third hour. You want to engage spiritual empowerment? Third hour. These are mysteries that you add to the catalog of, spirit, of your spiritual artillery. 
I'm not saying this is the only spiritual advantage we have. I'm only telling you this is a mystery that is available to us and it is by mystery that we rule this realm. Do you not notice that most of the things you battle with in the day, towards the end of the day, you pick them up between the hours of 9 and 12? Most of the things you pick them up there, including your exhaustion, you pick them up by the labors of 9 to 12. This is how we take advantage of times. Thank you, Father. Is somebody learning something? Is somebody learning something? Precious Holy Spirit. Korakanis Kavak. Kalagaras. Feliana Marakadis. Rasigrata Granan Rasavrakira. Ragamandre Kido Sangradigas. Rapaharira. The grace for communion and knowing God is released at the early hours of the morning. The grace to tame flesh and to receive spiritual empowerment is released at the gate of the third hour. And the next is the sixth hour. The first thing about the sixth hour is that the sixth hour is the hour of soul winning. Luke 23, verse 43. Jesus. You know, Jesus was crucified at the third hour. He didn't do anything. He said, and Jesus said unto him, this was Jesus talking to one of the criminals that was crucified with him. He said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. The hour of so winning. After he had traveled on the cross, at noon, Jesus began to exhale. And the first thing he did was to engage the thief. In John chapter 4, verse 3 to verse 6 he said he left judea and departed again into galilee and he must need go through samaria he didn't say he should he said he must because so when it compels you it makes your steps to be ordered it is only a christian who has not grown in the things of the spirit that so winning for him is something he he chooses to do for we who are sons we are compelled to. He said, for he must go through Samaria. Why? Then he cometh into the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Why do you think these guys put this emphasis? It was about the sixth hour. He was tired. And weary from his journey and then something happened there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water Jesus said unto her give unto me to drink so when he had begun it was about the sixth hour the grace for so winning is intensified do you notice that most times people take breaks from their work between 12 and 2 p.m. that's an hour where they need ventilation and the Bible says times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Father. The biggest ventilation is not the shawarma and the ice cream that you take for break. The biggest ventilation is the word of life that the souls of men yearn for. And that hour is the hour for maximizing possibilities of soul winning. You want to attempt it, try it, you will be amazed. That gate, there is something about it with soul winning. I don't have time. I just want to give you this nugget. So when you pray by 6 p.m., you may deal with anything by faith and the Holy Ghost may bring anything to your heart. But primarily, make sure you want to know God at that time. You want to experience Him. When you pray by 9, make sure you want to deal with flesh and want to receive spiritual empowerment so that as you go out by 12, you have the ability to win souls and to rule your world. And then when you pray by 12, know that it is an hour of soul winning. When you go out by 12, know that it's an hour of soul winning. The second thing about the sixth hour, it is that it is the hour of intervention. That was why Jesus intervened for the guy on the cross. And something happened. At the twelfth hour, everywhere became dark. Darkness came upon the nation because something was happening. God 
was entering the foundations of the earth and he was restructuring the foundation of this realm. It was at that time that all of the miraculous operations began. It's a time of travail in Acts. It's a time to intercede for nations, to intercede for souls, for tribes, for people, and for government. In Acts chapter 10 verse 9, it says, On the morrow, as they went on their way. Now, these were the people that Cornelius sent to Peter. He said, And they drew nigh unto the city. Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. It's a time of travail. And notice what happened. That was when the door of the gospel opened to the Gentile. Even Peter was not aware, but it was an operation of the Spirit. And as he prayed, a vase descended from heaven. And God said, Arise, kill and eat. And Peter said, No, I've been an upright man all my life. I cannot eat that which is unclean. He didn't know that the gates of the Gentile was opening. So the purpose of that prayer was to intercede for nations, was to intercede for souls. The sixth hour is the hour for interceding for nations, for gates, for, te for territories, for government. When you go to pray by that time, you can pray for your need, but know that that is an hour for intercessors. Those matters about others that doesn't concern you, that's when to bring them up. Because at that time, God wants to reach the nations. It was God that brought the vision to him that he wanted to invade the Gentile. And in Acts chapter 10 verse 44, while Peter yet speak, the Holy Ghost fell upon them. This was the protocol that God himself was producing. So if you want to pray for nations, attempt it by 12 noon, you will be amazed. It's the time for interceding for nations. You may not even be aware, just speak in tongues. You are uttering mysteries. Like Peter went up to pray. It was never his intention to pray for the Gentile, but the gate of the nations had opened. Because at the 12th hour, is the hour of the nations. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm teaching you how to maximize prayer. How to maximize prayer. Prayer. The enterprise of heaven. Creatures of heaven are creatures of communion. So prayer is one of the civilizations of heaven. I'm teaching you how to maximize it. John chapter 19, verse 14. He said, and it was the preparation of the Passover about the sixth hour and they said unto the Jews he said unto the Jews behold your king what does that mean is the hour of judgment that was when Jesus was scorched at the pillar and was crowned with the crown of tongues what was it for that was when God activated his judgment for the nations so any man that maximizes that hour he can bring the interventions of God to nation. He crowned Jesus with the crown of tongue and he said, Behold your king. Look at Luke chapter 23, verse 44. You know, you may not know these things. So we don't pray all prayers about the same, the same time. And it was about the sixth hour. And there was darkness over the earth until the ninth hour. The earth was going through a spiritual war. God's vengeance upon iniquity and the darkness upon the foundations of the earth was being enacted and things were happening. And it was at that time that he took the crown so that he will absorb that judgment. So that hour is the hour of judgment. That is the hour when God's anger and vengeance come. So if there be anything that legislates against the people of God, that is the time to raise intercession. And you make decrees and say, let judgment be passed in the favor of the righteous because at that time jesus wore the crown at that time the anger of god hit the earth and all of it fell on the christ so you can make declarations at that time in mark mark chapter 15 verse 33 remember everything i'm sharing with you is for practice and when the sixth hour was come there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour the anger of God. This is when God, God is angry against wickedness. God is angry against sin. God is angry 
against evil. So you want to legislate for nations that darkness will roll away. You can provoke the wrath of God at this time. This is why it is an hour of intercession. The sixth hour. The next gate of time is the ninth hour. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The ninth hour is the hour of mercy. Is the hour of mercy. The hour of mercy. Acts chapter 3 from verse 1. That's, they also call it the hour of prayer. He said, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. What happened at that time being the ninth hour? In verse 3 to verse 6, they met the man who was crippled sitting at the gate. He said, who seen Peter and John labor to go into the temple, asked an arm, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. If there's anything you want to receive from God, this is the time to provoke intervention. It's an hour of mercy. Remember, Peter usually will not pray for the sick until he comes out of temple. In Acts chapter 5 verse 15, he said, when Peter came out from the place of prayer, they laid the sick by the street that his shadow may fall upon them that they may be healed. So Peter would usually pray for the sick after prayer, but he knew the significance of the hour of mercy. That's why it's called the hour of the evening sacrifice when oblation are raised to God to provoke his mercy. He said in Psalm 121 verse 2, he said that the lifting up of our hands shall be as the evening sacrifice. This is when oblations are raised to God because mercy comes at this time. There are many people who have erred. There are many people who are going through warfare that is beyond them but they don't know the hour of mercy. So they don't know when to pray the prayer of intervention. Your family is about to be scattered. Another woman is about to take your husband. You may not have what it takes to war, but there's an hour called the hour of mercy where you can come before the Lord and you lift up your hand and you say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, look upon me. What will my children do? Lord, look upon me. I have no strength. I have no stamina. I have nothing against this world. But there is something called mercy. The Bible says mercy prevails over judgment. And this is the time when mercy is allocated into the day. But how many maximizes it? And then you tell them to pray by three. They say we cannot pray. We are at work. Nobody say pray out loud. The Bible says Hannah went to the temple. And as he prayed, he mumbled his mouth. He was not talking. Eli thought he was drunk. But he knew something about prayer. There is a prayer that reaches the heart of the Father is the prayer of mercy. When you rise up at this time, you only cry. And as you cry, the heavens open and there's an intervention. The hour of mercy is the hour of three. Many don't know this time, so they waste it. That prayer you are praying by 12 and you are hoping that God will bring intervention. That's when God is looking at the nations. Then when God is looking at your affliction, you don't know what to say. You are busy. 3 p.m. He said he looked on them, expecting something, and he got something indeed. He got something indeed. The hour of mercy. Mark chapter 15, verse 34. The hour of mercy. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. If you know when to pray, you will have answers beyond your faith level. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being translated, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? God had turned his back at Jesus. Remember, the darkness began by 12. Jesus didn't cry. It was by 3 p.m., the hour of mercy. Lord, why have thou forsaken me? Why didn't he cry by 12? Why didn't he cry by one? Why didn't he cry by two? At three, the heart of the father is the heart of mercy. Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani, why hast thou forsaken me? 
he knew that at this time there is such an economy called the economy of mercy. You may be a prostitute and you came into this into Zion and you cannot ascend and fulfill your calling. Eloi, Eloi, is by 3 p.m. the hour of mercy. Lord, you know that from from the age of, of 15, I started prostituting. I did it for six years. Now my brain is releasing hormones, hormones that desire sex. I can't stop. Eloi, Eloi. Have mercy and something can happen to you and your brain will be reformatted. This is what the psalmist knows. Remember, the Bible called it the sure mercies of David. For 38 years, the Shekinah was open. It was not only the high priest that accessed the Shekinah. It was open for everyone because of the sure mercies of David. David knew something about mercy that nobody knew. And it was David that said, Thou restoreth my soul. You may be a murderer before you came into the kingdom. You may be a harlot. Your brain may be thinking evil, but there's an hour of mercy when you can call upon God and something can happen. You can be reformatted. The situation can be turned around, not by power, not by might, but by the spirit of the living God because there's a provoker of mercy. This is when men cry. Many people cry when they should be warring. Many people cry when they should be communing. You don't wake up by 6 a.m. and you are crying to God, have mercy. You don't wake up by nine and you are crying to God, have mercy. There is a time. It's called the hour of the evening oblation. These guys knew. So they came before Yahweh and they prostrate before him and Elohim will reach out to them. Jesus said, if you know the gift of God, if you know the gift of Elohim and who is it that ask of thee, give me to drink. You would have asked of me and I would have given you rivers of living water. What you think God is asking you for, you should be the one to ask for because he's willing to give beyond what you can think or ask. He said in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can think or ask according to the power that worketh within us. God wants to do beyond your faith, but there are mysteries that provoke it. Three, it's the hour of mercy. It's the hour of mercy. Wise men know how to entreat God at this time. The gates of the day. O Ramahanakaya. Kayala Mandeki. Kradiava Kura Skena Kisazili. Mayana Kumai. In the Rahadia Kuvak. Rasavaki Labraska. Mandelege Seliask. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Aya. O Brasino. That man will become wise. He said the secret things, they belong unto God. But the things that are revealed, they belong to us and to our children forever. The secrets of God is with them that fear him. He will show them his covenant. He said, we are the servants of God. Therefore, we have become the stewards of the mysteries of Christ. Rulers of this realm are keepers of mystery. He said, Daniel prayed three times in the day facing Jerusalem. When do you think Daniel prayed? Daniel prayed by six. Daniel prayed by, Daniel prayed by, by nine. Daniel prayed by twelve. And Daniel prayed by three. By nine, Daniel prayed to tame the flesh. That's why Daniel could not be contaminated by Babylon. You don't know what Babylon is. Babylon is not Egypt. Egypt arrests you when you have not known God. So you are a sinner. You are powerless after all. Jericho stops you from entering your promised land. Babylon will wait for you to enter your promised land. And it comes to excavate you from your promised land. Babylon will show you that you can become an apostle before I bring you down. You can become a prophet before I bring you down. So the only way to survive in Babylon is to know how to overcome flesh. So Daniel prayed three times. The first time of prayer is to deal with flesh. The second time of prayer was to intercede for the nation. He said in Daniel 9 verse 2, I, Daniel, I understood by books. He knew that the time of captivity was over. So he tore himself and he covered himself with ash cloth and began to fast. He knew that there's an hour for bringing deliverance unto Jacob. So he prayed by 12. And Daniel knew the sequences of mercy. So by 3, he prayed facing Jerusalem. So when they cast him into the lion's den, you can't kill that man. Mercy will say no. Because mercy prevails over judgment. There's no judgment that can rule over mercy. It's an economy. But wise men, wise men, this is why it said in Daniel chapter 5 verse 11, in him dwells the spirit of the Holy Ghost. It's a light and excellent wisdom and understanding such as dwell among the gods is with this Daniel. 
he knows what God does. He knows when God moves with vengeance. He knows when God moves with mercy. He knows when God moves with intervention. So when Daniel goes to pray, what he's doing, he's plugging into heaven. And the reason is because he has access to light. They did not read when Gabriel came. He didn't care, I came to give you answer. He said, I came to give you skill and understanding. I came to give you skill and understanding. There are many things you can't conquer, but there are mysteries that make them happen with ease. One of them is the mystery of the gates of time. Holy Father. If you know when to pray, none of your prayers will fall to the ground. They told Jesus, Lazarus, your friend is dead. He waited for two more days. And then when they told him, why do we have to wait? Jesus laughed. They said, ah, he's dead. He, if he sleeps, he will wake up. You know, Jesus is a man of mysteries. He knows there is no impossible if you know the mystery that answers the problem. They said, ah, ah. Why? If he's asleep, he will wake up. He now said, okay, he's dead. And, so, and, and Thomas said, let's go and die with him. Because they don't believe that by any means men can rise from the dead. And when Jesus showed up, he didn't go straight to the tomb. Jesus paused, waited, and wept. And when he finished weeping, when the time was right, he went to the tomb and he said, I thank you, Father, because you always answer me. Not just hear me, you answer me. He said, I'm not praying this prayer for myself, but for them that they may believe. And he said, Lazarus, comfort. You can call the dead back to life if you know the mysteries that makes for it to happen. Haya. Mysteries make us powerful. Once upon a time, a young lady was struck and she fell down and died for about four hours. And they came and called us. And men of God could not hide because they arrested us. Say, come, you know that time you have to prove your call. So I went with my friend and we went. We prayed all the prayers we knew to pray. For three hours we prayed. And when the lady was not come back to life, she had become cold and stiff. The woman wanted to cry. I said, shut up, don't cry because I know the scriptures. However, my faith could not bring her back to life. And I remember the story of Kenneth Hagin. I remember the story of with Smith Wigglesworth. I applied all of them, it didn't work. And then I got tired and I sat down and I was asking God, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. I knew I didn't have faith to raise the dead. And from somewhere, the lady sneezed and came back to life. And she was jacked up back to life. And from that day, I entered into a covenant of mercy with God. I've gone to places, I've seen things that are impossible. When my faith can't carry it, I know something in God. It's an economy that prevails over judgment. It's called the economy of mercy. That's why I pray by three. When I pray by three, I am enacting, reenacting, and empowering the covenants of mercy that I have with God. This is how we prevail. It's a mystery. It's called the mystery of mercy. Ah, we're out of time. Go ahead and pray in tongues for one minute. We are praying in tongues, praying in tongues. Let me entreat God. If I can have a chance to finish what I'm about to preach, because I'm about to go into deeper waters. I'm about to talk about matters of covenant. I'm about to talk about matters of warfare, judgments, and legislation. I'm about to talk about matters of mysteries. Pray in tongues for one minute. Kambara Kazuzia. Veleganaya, Interabu Kabai, Karakira, Redia Sandaki, Morodondro Kamanaki, Undurina, Kazila Kadavaki, Montosila Banaki. These things I'm sharing. Some of you think they are just cognitive, but the spirit is entering into you. Some of you, by three o'clock, you begin to hear sounds from heaven because the angels of mercy will begin to minister to you. Some of you, by 6 a.m., what you need is the knowledge of God. The angels that resonate before Yahweh Elohim will begin to bring you sounds, and you will find out that by 6 a.m., you will just wake up. Even if you slept by 3, you will wake up because something has been activated in your life. Some of you, by 12, those utterances will come to you because it's an hour, it's an hour, it's an hour. It's an hour, the mysteries of the watches of time. Many that rule this realm, this is what happens to them. I was praying in my friend's house by 3 p.m. in the evening, and suddenly I saw an eagle 
and the eagle was bigger than a building. And somewhere I found myself hanging on the wings of the eagle. And the eagle just opened its wing and it was leaping from one state to another state, from one nation to another nation. And I woke up, I said, what is this? And he said, this is the mystery of the speed that is attached to your ministry. People can do it for 10 years, I will do it for one week. It's a mystery because the hand of God came upon Elijah. He outran the chariot of Ahab. There's a mystery in my life. It's called the mystery of speed. It's a covenant. It's called mercy. So for me, 3 p.m. is a very strategic hour. You are mighty on your throne. Oh, thank you, Father. Hi. To your holy place. Let me see your face and your glory, Lord. Let me know you more than I've known you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You see, the wind of the Spirit is already moving. The wind, the wind. If it begins to happen like this, it means the Holy Ghost is the one that will begin to teach. And the Holy Ghost teaches by impartation. You know, we teach cognitively, but there are certain dimensions that are imparted as a body of spirits. The wind of the spirit is beginning to move. Most of you begin to sense the movement in your head. Most of you will feel the weight of the glory on your chest. The wind of the spirit is beginning to move. I can sense it. That means the angels have gone ahead because they will begin to minister to you. While you are yet in your room, the hand of God will come upon you. The wind of the Spirit will come upon you. And as I speak, as a custodian of the oracles of God, I say, let the impartation of the Spirit, let it begin. Kayaka, Renea. Mandekevak, Rededenia, Mantekabana, Radagava, 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 Yele Kesua. Somebody is entering into the gate of mercy, even as I speak right now. Kaya, Yenahalis, 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 Brandaka Parik, Regenia Panak, Randadilia, Montosilia Kanaya, Ha Satawa, Haya, Haya. Haya, oh Raman de Kiza, Mundo Rakabais, Mandalabas, oh Zilamandi, Zilamandi. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, ah, Casa Frana, Kelina Mancaris, Geriana Procosigas. You know, because of this message that we are speaking about now, God wants to bless. I'm sensing God now removing pains and growth from people's body there's somebody with pain excruciating pain from around your neck is going because as we speak of mercy the mercies of god are beginning to prevail over judgment as i speak there's a growth leaving somebody's abdomen as i speak there's a growth leaving somebody's breast in the name of jesus by mercy let it begin to happen somebody has a pain on your knee you couldn't stretch your knee Come on, go ahead. The time has come for your healing. The hand of God. I'm seeing somebody with a condition on your ankle. You can't stretch your hand firmly. You can't lift heavy things. The pain is lifted by the message of God. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing somebody. You have a condition. Oh my God. Oh my God. In your private region. As I speak now, I command the pain. Go in the name of Jesus. By the power of mercy. I'm seeing somebody. There's a crisis in your family right now. There's a crisis. You're about to lose your marriage. You're about to lose your marriage. But if mercy be true, let it speak for you. And I bring peace. And I say, peace be still. In the name of Jesus, I see somebody. You are called of God. But your husband does not believe in your calling. As I speak right now, I command, let the grace come upon him. And let his eyes be open in the name of Jesus and he becomes your biggest partner in the name of Jesus mercy says no Kaya, I'm seeing somebody with an eye condition blurring visions blurring vision I command that eye be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus 
Somebody has a pain underneath your, your leg, your foot. There's a pain. You can't step your feet on the ground. The pain is gone now. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Koramaka. Zendekira Baroka. Matelia Vunazia. Zedeke Farika Matakia. Mantara Parir. Rete Granagas. Somebody is having symptoms of COVID-19. As I speak right now, I command all the symptoms. Vanish in the name of Jesus. Rabas. Rekenia Kamak. Randabari Tavalas. Radraka Vaziri. Zedekima Raganak. Oh, Rahadi Avask. Rahadi Avask. Rahadi Avask. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The angels of healing minister to you. They minister to you. And listen, it's beyond what's happening here. I'm seeing the angels minister to people's families. I'm seeing a lady here. You are trusting God for healing for your dad. It has to do with something abdominal, as if it's part and organ of the body, maybe kidney or something. As I speak now, the hand of God will come upon him. Every condition related to him. I'm seeing somebody is standing for your father. He has issues with high blood pressure. I command healing in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing somebody with pain on the chest. I command that pain. Go in the name of Jesus. Every devil of infirmity, I command you out of their bodies. Out of their bodies. In the name of Jesus. La Barana, Kedeanda, Bondokira, Barak, Park. Somebody here, you have a call. As I speak right now, you are a young man. You are about 35 years old. The calling of God on your life. He came to you when you were 15. But you have been struggling with it. You have always known. But right now, the prayer in your heart is, Lord, empower me. I must fulfill my call. As I speak now, the hand of God is upon you. And the seasons that were lost is being restored. Is being restored in the name of Jesus. It is being restored in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a young dark lady. You are 28 years old. You have a prophetic and an intercessory call. And this season, you have been having visitations, encounters, and bodies for prayer. I speak over you right now. Let everything planted in your heart, let it flow out like rivers of living waters. In the name of Jesus. Kaya, Taranak, Taranak, Manta Paraki Zozak, Radiana Kruvos, Delina Mankaradi, Tantaradia Suvaya, Borakira Bandi, Borianda Brigadiers, Mala Tava. Most of you are already receiving testimonies. You can drop your testimonies at the chat box because the Lord is making things happen. The Lord is making things happen. Eye conditions healed in the name of Jesus. Ear condition healed. You are having pains in your ear. You are having noise inside your ears. I command healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Karamana, Keliana Brock, by the message of God, by the message of God. I'm seeing a lady, you have battled with migraine for about seven years now. Migraine, excruciating migraine. I command that pain to break off your head in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Rapane Kida. I'm seeing somebody healed of migraine again. Migraine. This one, you are a young man. It's like on your forehead. When it comes, it's so heavy. It pulls you as if you want to fall. And you can't even open your eyes. I command that devil of headache. Out in the name of Jesus. I command healing and perfection. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Father. Kalamanda. Merina Karakai. Kariada Vigo I'm seeing a young man. You've had vision of oil flowing from your hand. And the Lord told you, your hand is his healing finger. And he said, don't touch your hand on anything that is profane. Your consecration is on your right palm. And you see that in recent time, it has been a struggle because the vibrations you felt on that hand is no longer there. As I speak now, on account of mercy, I bring you the life, the presence, and the power of God. And I say, let that oppression of the Spirit be activated again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you glory. And since somebody from the eastern part of Nigeria, there's a dispute concerning land. 
you are a young man right now listen to me on this platform there's a dispute concerning land and somebody has even died and right now the contention there is so much fear but as i speak now they will be evacuated the lord himself rises for you to fight yeshua jehovah support he rises for you in the name of jesus there's a dispute concerning land and on this altar i resolve it in the name of jesus thank you father your inheritance cannot be taken from you in jesus precious name thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus their healing is taking place already i'm telling you i'm seeing people's siblings being healed people's siblings being healed of migraines of of liver lung condition of fractures they are being healed right now i make it happen by the strength of the spirit thank you father check oh my oh my somebody's mouth is being washed by an angel you have had a condition with mouth odor foul smell from your mouth that you have lost confidence in of speaking in the public i just saw a vision the angels are washing your mouth you are healed in the name of jesus thank you father thank you lord rakayana keanda genak gadalia brindekidis garandre kidia somebody has been sensing a sharp pain at the lower part of your spine go ahead and bend your back the pain is gone the pain is gone the pain is gone somebody has an issue on your right knee cap and when you stretch your leg you feel pain on top of your knee the pain is gone i came to announce to you by the privilege of the court and the mercies of god you are healed in the name of jesus thank you father Thank you Lord. Ya la manda. Crede gama. Sanzali bradiga bundaki. Kalianda rafagios. Burakida bande. Oh Ramanai. You can check. Check your body you are healed. You have received an impartation. Go ahead and check. You are healed. You can drop your testimony on the drop box. I'm seeing a heavy garment being lifted from someone. It's like you are so weak especially when you wake up in the morning. is as if you were beaten at night i see a heavy garment like a thick blanket lifted you are going to sense yourself light light a garment has been lifted a garment has been lifted right now as i speak in the name of jesus healed healed karanak kedelia kilask kedelia kilask kedelia kilask go ahead and pray in tongues go ahead and pray in tongues somebody is, is about to be delivered from the influence of a spirit husband you have been molested in your dreams as i am speaking now the hand of god will come upon you and a being will leave you he will walk out of you i command you in the name of jesus you devil out 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 thank you father kabarak talanda lavina bradiga zundush paragida branda kilo brashala thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord somebody is being healed of a fractured bone a fractured bone when you shift your leg to an angle you sense so much pain somebody is being healed from a fractured bone right now let it be done in the name of jesus thank you abba father thank you abba father oh glory to god glory to god glory to god glory to god some of you can go ahead and call your siblings right now you'll be amazed that they've been healed they've been healed they've been healed thank you lord thank you lord we give you all the glory oh precious father we love you we love you we love you some of you will sleep and wake up and you just discovered you were healed you didn't even know because the angels are ministering thank you lord ah yeah karabanda kalanda refayasti take all the praise lord Take all the glory. Take all the glory. If you have noticed a healing in your body, a change in your body, just go ahead and write it. The admin will pick it up and it will be chronicled so that the Lord will be glorified. Don't think I can proceed with this teaching anymore. The twelfth hour. The twelfth hour. The twelfth hour. The 12th hour is the hour of covenant. The 12th hour 
is the hour of covenant. Oh, Rakizis Kinagas, Barandre Kilush, Mundokari, Kalagaras, Luke chapter 22, verse 20. You know, in the Middle East, usually they have their supper by the hours of 6 p.m. And in Luke 22, verse 20, he said, Likewise, the cup of supper, of supper saying, Likewise, also the cup after supper, he lifted up, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which I shed for you. Now, that's when he prosecuted the covenant of of the new the new testimony the new order and the new operation of god symbolic of the breaking of bread and the drinking of the cup and that he did at the 12th hour so the 12th hour is the hour of covenant for those of you who are spiritual you are going to notice that most times when it is getting towards 6 p.m you begin to hear sounds in your spirit you begin to hear sounds because those are the songs of songs. They are songs that are sung for those that have a covenant with the Lord. Those who are in a love relationship with God. That's the hour of covenant. It's also the hour of cleansing. Because when God breaks the bread and, 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 and lifts the cup, he, he, he purges. He said as he broke the bread, their eyes were open and they knew him. The eyes had been cleansed. The veil had been taken. They've been washed with ice So when he, at that hour, it's an hour of cleansing. He said in John 13 verse 4 to verse 11, He rised from the supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into the bosom and began to wash the, the disciples' feet and to wipe it with his towel wherewith he was guided. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, doest thou wash my feet? Jesus answered, and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. So the men that are cleansed, are the men that have a part with God. So that hour usually is the hour of cleansing. And that's why most times it is during the time of supper that he asks the, the disciples asking questions. Most of the times when he attacks the Pharisees of their evil heart is when they sit to supper at the twelfth hour. That's when the day ends and they come together to appraise. So God will cleanse men. And he said, the words you have heard from me, they have washed you. They have cleansed you. So it's an hour of cleansing the 12th hour the 12th hour is an hour of covenant is an hour of cleansing and it's an hour of spiritual inquiry so most of the times the disciples will ask him questions questions upon questions john 20 21 matthew 26 6 to 13 they kept asking questions to know because that's when they come and retire from the day's exercise so they can commune with him and ask him questions so that is the hour of Inquiry. We have the third hour of the night. We call it the third hour of the night, which is actually 9 p.m. It's actually supposed to be the 15th hour. And um, there are two things very quickly about the 15th hour. I may not go about reading the scriptures anymore, just to list it, you read it. It's the hour of escape. So they plotted the coup to kill Paul. And his cousin, his little nephew, rather, heard of it and came to tell the keeper of the prison. And when he heard of it, at the third hour of the night, he made arrangement for 200 men and they carried Paul and sneaked him out of the town. So that is an hour of escape. Every time you want to engage God to escape from a calamity, from a crisis, try the 15th hour or the third hour of the night. It's also the hour of rest. Now Jesus came to his disciples and, said, and saw them sleeping. And he said, sleep on. Go on and rest. I will trouble you no more. Now you need to understand that in spiritual economy, we receive rest in the place of prayer. 
He said, Therein shall the righteous rest. With a stammering tongue will I speak to these people. So rest is in the place of prayer. So if rest can be captured at the ninth hour, then when we engage prayer at the ninth hour, we will find rest. So it is a mystery. I'm just speaking it now so that I'll round up. I don't have the time to do the teaching anymore. At the sixth hour of the night, which is like what you call the 18th hour, or what you call 12th midnight, because we are counting from 6 p.m., is the hour of government. That's where warfare and legislation takes place. Men who don't know how to rule at the at the hour of 12 midnight can never can never rule in this realm rulership in this realm is a product of the engagements of the the hour of 12 midnight so in luke chapter 22 verse 53 this was what happened jesus said he said when i was daily with you in the temple Yes, stretch forth not thy hand against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. So it is a, an hour of powers. So the same way darkness wants to stretch its ugly head, sons of order, watchers, keepers, intercessors, they rise at this time and they advance the, the purposes of God. This is where potent legislation takes place. It is called commanding your money anything you provoke and make happen by this time is what will determine the whole of your your day till you end it up this is when you command your money this is when you legislate against darkness the devil is warring against your health the devil is warring against your progress this is time of government it is also the time of warfare in acts chapter 16 verse 25 look at what happened they arrested Paul and Silas. They beat them. They didn't do anything. They were waiting for 12 midnight. And he said, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And he said, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison was shaking. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's band fell from their hand. Why did they wait till 12 midnight? It is the hour of warfare. And as they prayed and sang, the foundation was shaking and the whole chains broke. The chain around your family, the chain around your health, the chain around your job can break if you understand warfare and spiritual legislation. This is what wise men do. In Matthew 25 verse 6, legislation. And at midnight, there was a cry. The, and the and, and, it, and there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out and meet him. So, this is actually the parable of the ten virgins. That midnight prophetically means the end of the age, but also speaking from the context of midnight in understanding of times, it is the time when the bridegroom shows up. That's when intervention comes. So, a man who wants to war, who wants to partner with Zion, will know how to legislate at midnight so that he can take advantage of his weapons of war. So it's an hour of government where we advance the will of God. It's an hour of warfare and it's an hour of legislation. This is how men rule. And then the last watch of the day, which is the 24th hour, or what you call the eighth hour, is the hour of mysteries. The hour of mysteries. You know, usually businessmen and rich people understand this. So normally they wake up by 3 a.m. just for inspiration. They are quiet because their soul is gathered. So they are just there meditating. Most of the great inventions, this is where they picked it from. It's not a secular knowledge. This is how wise men rule their world. It was Nebuchadnezzar that had a vision. And because he discovered that the wise men were, were mischievous, he said he was not going to tell them the vision. If they could interpret the vision, they should also be able to tell him the vision. And then Daniel went to the house and made the thing known unto Hananiah, Mashiach, and Azariah, his companion, that they would desire mercy of the, of the God of heaven concerning the secret 
that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Now, this was Daniel. He knew that the secrets will come by prayer. But how did he get it? Verse 19, Daniel 2, 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. And when Daniel came before the king, he made his boast in the Lord. He made his boast in the Lord. In verse 28, Daniel said, But there is God in heaven that revealeth secret, and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days to come. And the dream that the dream and the vision of thy head upon thy bed are these. What who is that kind of man? He knows how to maximize the gate of mysteries. If you want to maximize mysteries, every time you are troubled, you don't know what to do. There's a challenge that you don't know the direction to take. You don't know what to do. Wake up by 3 a.m. and journey into 4 a.m. You'll be amazed. As the wind come with freshness, so will the dew of heaven come and light will break upon you. These were the practices of Daniel. And no wonder in Daniel 5.11, the Bible says, Light and understanding and excellent wisdom, such as is among the gods, is found in this Daniel. This is the mystery of the watches of the day. They are the gates of time. And if you maximize it, you will be a ruler. 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. 12 noon to 1 p.m. 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. 12 midnight to 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. The eight gates of every day. Which will you choose to maximize? I told you to pray by 12, by 6, and by 3. The reason is because by 12, you learn priesthood and legislation, and you become strong in spiritual warfare. By 6, you enter into communion, so you have encounters with God, and you know Him experientially. And then by 3, you interact with God, and you receive mercy. Remember, the reason why God even considered the season when He brought salvation to the Gentiles, was because of Cornelius. He was praying at the ninth hour, which is 3 p.m. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 from verse 1, and an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Send men unto the city of Joppa. You will st- unto Simon. He dwells with one Simon the Tanner. That's the Gentile. It was an hour of mercy. So he provoked what was not available to the Gentile. And when Peter went to pray at the twelfth hour the next day, an encounter came. Go now. Cornelius have provoked mercy. And when Peter came in Mark 10 44, while he yet speak, the Spirit of God fell upon them. This is how men who take advantage of the gates of time. And so, precious Father, thank you for your children. I ask that, Lord, these words will not only bring understanding, but your Spirit will enter into us and empower us to do the same. I bless them with your presence, with your anointing, and with the ability to practice what they've heard. So they will become everything that has been taught. So let it be written. So let it be established. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.